there weren't that many people sending email. So it was kind of, well, which, which way is it going to go? Um, you know, we'll, we'll go with the obviously clearly better way of starting with a big name, and they seem to have gone with this way. Each side said they'll see the light in due time. And I sat in several meetings where they, they discussed this and said, no, oh, you're all wrong. Eventually just the weight of history settled it, and we've, we've all gone for this, this scheme. The UK and the US disagreed in multiple ways. So the internet initially went with so originally they just had .arpa, so you'd be at stanford.arpa, joe at stanford.arpa or something like that. Again, that wasn't going to scale. We couldn't all belong to the ARPA. They split it up into several top level domains. .edu was for educational sites, mostly universities. .mil for military, because obviously this came out of the ARPANET and there was military people. .net was generally for network providers. .com for commercial. .gov for the government, INT for international organisations, they were thinking things like the UN and anything else, and .org for any other organisation. That list has now grown, they've added all sorts of other things to it, but this is the way it, it kind of worked. So you were at, uh, say, Berkeley.edu, Amazon.com, you were split up in those sort of top-level domains. In the UK, they decided, and actually across most of Europe, they decided they were going to go more hierarchical, so there would be a UK domain. So in France there's a .fr and then below the UK they had CO for commercial and AC for academic community and then you you divide it up between that and for the longest time there was only UK AC basically in the UK. There was, there was I think one commercial domain just to sort of prove it worked for a, the longest while. However the bad thing for us is that um, not only was this, this sort of at odds, we could sort of live with that because you know, knew to send all the UK stuff to the UK and any of these other things you'd send off mostly to the ARPANET or the internet as it was beginning to come. But the thing we did weirdly in the UK was to flip everything around. So this would be uk.ac.not.cs for the computer science at Nottingham. And if you were in the internet, it would be the other way around, cs.not ac.uk and they both had good reasons for doing this both of them said it was a much more natural way to write the addresses you would always start with the most significant thing and work your way down no you'd always have the most significant thing on the right hand side and work it down that way this caused us no end of issues in our mail routing tables because typically users would pick up business cards or they'd be sent addresses in email addresses not actually in the headers but oh you can contact me at in berkeley.edu so we would type in you know eric at berkeley.edu or whatever and we'd have to sort this mess out within the routing tables and mostly it was okay if it sort of ended with edu that was okay but there were a few palindromic addresses and we were really hit when Czechos Czechoslovakia I can hardly say that joined and they have the top level domain of CS. So now you could actually parse this either way. This could be somewhere in Czechoslovakia or it could be somewhere in the UK. So this added even more complexity to the mail tables, which were already pretty complex. So you would take an address and you try and parse it both ways. You'd say, does it work this way? If not, you'd flip it around and say, does it work that way? If you got a hit, that was all well and good. You knew where to send it. But typically you didn't have a complete list of every place in the known world so you'd start chopping bits off you'd chop off the cs and say do i know about nottingham in ac uk and if you didn't know about that you'd chop off the next bit and say well what about uk ac or, or just uk so you'd work your way back up but you'd have to do it each way so in actual fact you'd chop off the cs going this way and then you chop off the uk going the other way and see if that made sense and then you You'd start chopping off in the opposite directions and you keep working up until you found the longest possible match. And I don't think we ever really ended up with completely palindromic addresses, but that was more by luck than judgment, really. It was just crazy times. You'd get these addresses, you'd have to flip them around and we'd give weightings to some of them. And sometimes you'd fill out your table more than you needed just to say, no, this place Although it looks ambiguous, no, it really does need to go off to the internet and not to, not to this way or that way. I think this sort of formally died out somewhere in the 1990s. 
uh, but but it lasted for a no end of time and most nearly everywhere else kind of ended up with the, the US version um, and e even if they had their own names like France or Greece or or, or whatever their own top level domains they, they tended to stick with this one so it was a specifically UK problem of trying to get all that sorted out really a problem we could have done without it's sort of like an Endian problem, isn't it? Really? Oh, absolutely. It was called Big Endian versus Little Endian. It's still the same on the internet. Do you, if you're sending like an integer, which is typically often composed of four bytes, do you send the biggest one first or the smallest one first? Uh, luckily, I think those are the two only options now. But this this one was sort of a uh, a problem of our own making. I don't know why we didn't just. Well, it wasn't really clear at the time who was going to win out and. Uh, they, they came up with this in the, the internet and said, this is going to win, this is going to be, this is the obvious way to do things. No, no, it's much easier to do it hierarchically. Uh, and in some, there is some sympathy with that, you know, you, you can sort of divulge this to the UK and say, right, the UK, you sort out what goes on below UK, uh, because this one's a bit more awkward if you're going to sort out who grants names below edu. It, it's sort of an international thing. Same with govs and things like that. So it's much easier to do it by country because you've usually got some body there that can divide it up. And there should be 32 bits there. Now each of these bits has a number associated with it. So this would be considered bit zero, and this would be considered bit 31. And then we can count down. So this is then bit 24, that's bit 23, bit 16 and 15, and then that.